So I'm here to tell you all what it's like to be multiracial. Can we get applause for that? <laughs> so there are a lot of people who think that they're multiracial because they're maybe part Irish and part Italian. That means you're multicultural. Multiracial or mixed race means you have two or more. Now that is what really distinguishes my experience from a lot of other people in this space. Here in the States, we are really focused on our racial identity. Who we are, how we look, what we eat, what we speak, tends to all get wrapped up into a not so neat little box. This is the topic of my story. Check the box. So we are conditioned from a very early age to figure out what our racial identity is by checking just one box. My favorite box was black, non-Hispanic. I'm obviously black, but my last name is Lindo. So what was I supposed to choose? The 2000 census was the first time you could actually check more than one box. That's a little late in our history and too late for a lot of people. Only 2% actually checked more than one box. So I had to figure out what my own identity was gonna be. I didn't see anything out there that looked like me. So what did I say? I'm a mutt. That was my favorite thing. I even wrote my college essay about that. What my life was like as a mutt. College was a lot of fun for me because I decided to let them decide what my, what my ethnicity was. I would choose other, fill in everything that I mixed with, and then I'd find out what they chose when I got invited to, oh, say, the Asian American Culture Club. <laughs> really obvious. So these were all of the internal challenges that I faced. But really the challenges came from not how I had to figure out who I was for myself, but how others perceived me. The favorite question that I used to always get was, what are you? Okay, so I'm human. I'm female, what is it that you're going for here? And then as if they got it, would say, oh, what's your nationality? Okay, so I'm American. Still probably not what they were going for. <laughs> so this was me going to school. Typically I went to school with people who didn't look anything like me, but I didn't feel any different than them. So that meant that I didn't look like how I felt, nor did I feel how I looked. I was so confused as a little girl growing up that when everyone around me was getting the curly perm, I decided to get one too. Now, did I mention that I'm black? <laughs> my hair is naturally curly. It takes me an hour to blow dry my hair straight. My favorite comment that people would make is, you really need to date someone who's your own. Okay, so who would that be, Tiger Woods? <laughs> he was so fed up with the whole one box thing that he came up with his own race, Coblin Asian. Now that's still missing one of my groups, but it's a step up from Mutt. And then of course there's a guilt when you classify yourself as multiracial. Because that means that within a community, the box that you don't check gets less funding for programs and has less political power. That's a heavy burden to bear. But along with all these challenges come some benefits. So what I really love about being multiracial means that you don't just get to know me. You get to know my parents, my grandparents, and even my great-grandparents. It's my whole history. There's a lot of research out there about the multiracial identity. There are studies in psychology, sociology, education, public policy, and you wanna know why? We are the fastest growing minority group in the United States. The favorite question I got from somebody was asking me if I could actually sense everything that's a part of me. I never thought about it that way before, but yes, I can. There's no denying that I'm black. I would never even try to. It's something that I wear every day. That one drop rule, for those of you who've heard of that, runs very deep. It's what gives me that instant connection to a perfect stranger that's walking down the street. But just as wrong as it is for me to deny being black, it's also wrong for me to deny being Filipino. My grandfather's influence was carried through my mom, who's here in the audience. <laughs> And that is clearly what set and defined my values, my philosophy, and my approach to life. And while I didn't actually have a direct influence, I've always sensed my native ancestry. I've always felt connected to the environment, the land, enjoyed being a part of nature, and it's very much a part of my life's work right now. My grandfather here is from Belize. Anybody know Belize? <laughs> that is an entire country of people who look like me. It is so incredible going there. They don't have any questions about my background. To them, I'm just Belizean. So 
By the year 2050, one in five Americans will identify as multiracial. So remember what that means to them. And if you're curious about their background, the question is, what is your ethnicity? Not, what are you? <laughs>